and I choose happiness. I choose um, drama-free life. I want a drama-free life. Oh my gosh, Colorado makes me feel like it's drama-free life because Colorado is just amazing. Um, absolutely amazing, sorry. Um, but that's how I feel. I feel at peace here in Colorado. And everyone wonders why we moved to Colorado because I do, I feel at peace here. Um, I don't har know how to explain it. I don't know how to describe it. I just feel, I feel at home if that makes sense at all. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. This is episode three in the major subjects that were missing from the Netflix documentary. And in this episode, we're going to be dealing with Nutgate. Now, it's really interesting what Shanann said in that clip, which was made, I think, around about May 8th or something. I say that under correction, but um, I think she was pregnant at the time already. Whether she knew it or not is uh, debatable, but um, I think she was... She seemed quite tearful during that that spiel that she gave, about a half hour spiel on a Saturday in early May, as far as I recall. I was looking at the um, one of the marketing slides for the Netflix documentary, and it it's really it's really done well. It is a picture of a phone with a with a picture of the like a, a wallpaper or whatever of the Watts family on the phone and then this phone is sort of lying on the ground and its screen is like fragmented and it really is an, an excellent visual summary of the the Watts family tragedy it's this the, the cracks and the um, the flaws I guess um, that is being highlighted instead of being sort of not there they're being emphasized over the this this happy uh, this sort of fake happy family um, picture but what is interesting about the documentary itself is it sort of per perpetuates that anyway i mean it tells shanann's story but it kind of tells shanann's story as if shanann is actually happy as if shanann is actually sort of things are, are fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with their finances. And also, there's nothing wrong kind of otherwise. And so, you know, in the first episode, we spoke about um, the multi-level marketing aspect that was totally missing. And I mean, that is something that was integral to Shanann's life. She, um, she, she would sort of get up and eat, sleep and, and breathe, thrive. So it was a major part of it, and that's not really brought up in the Netflix documentary. Um, the second um, episode that I did on this, dealing with Kessinger, that also wasn't really brought up very much. Maybe understandably because it was all about Shanann, but, but this episode, dealing with Nutgate, that is very much and was very much part of Shanann's story in the last month of her life. It was very much front and center in everyone's mind, in her mind, in her children's minds, in Chris Watts's mind, in his parents' minds, in her parents' minds. So why not bring it up? Why not deal with it? And yet it's sort of left out. And you've got to ask why. Why in a story about Shanann would you leave something so crucial out of the Netflix documentary? Now, you might argue and say, well, it's not completely left out. Um, there is a reference to it here and there, but not really. The, where the Netflix documentary emphasized Facebook posts that Shanann did, they're mostly emphasizing sort of happy family scenarios, um, you know, uh, things that we know and, and have seen quite often. We, there's not a single... Um, Facebook post I can recall that comes from that gate in terms of where she did that rant where, where she sort of ranted about uh, I never want to see my family again and all that kind of thing uh, I don't think Nutgate reflects well on anybody I don't think it reflects well on Shanann I don't think it reflects well on her husband his failure to respond um, 
I don't know if it's fair to say that uh, it doesn't reflect well in the chore. And I just mean, you know, Cece was being a little bit naughty. She, um, I, I think people have the misconception that Cindy Watts took out a tub of ice cream and put it in front of Cindy and, and that upset Shanann when Cindy, but then I think you could also argue there were pistachios in the in Shanann's parents' home. Um, that's something that, that was brought up. So, um, and also there were peanut, there was like peanut butter that appears in the Watts home. And of course, as soon as you talk about this stuff, it, you create sort of raging arguments about, well, uh, she wasn't allergic to pistachios or she wasn't, wasn't allergic to um, peanut butter or she wasn't allergic to this or that. And we're going to deal with that very lightly in this episode. This episode isn't really about who's to blame it's about what what do we what do we find out what do we learn through nutgate not whose fault is it but what do we learn through that through through kind of what happened um although i think it is an interesting uh conversation you know what was cc actually allergic to because it you know it could be coconuts it could be this or it could be that the fact that we don't have certainty on that is part of the the frustration of the Watts case. Is you know, it, it's 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 strange how two years later you don't just get someone providing something like a doctor's certificate or whatever, just saying, well, this is what she was suffering from. It's simply not provided, so we simply don't know. And one would think, with the amount of attention that this case has gotten, that, that something like that would be made clear. Anyway, what we do know is in Sherilyn Cadle's book, uh, she, uh, she wrote, or I think she was citing something Chris Watts said, was that Cindy didn't actually believe Cece had these allergies to begin with. And um, you might say, well, it's not her right to make the decision or whatever, uh, or that she's minimizing or undermining Shanann or whatever. I, I don't think it's actually about that anyway. Um, all, what people want to, I've, I've seen huge arguments and huge debates about, is it this nut or is it that one? It's got nothing to do with peanuts. It's got, it's about tree nuts or whatever. But as far as I'm concerned, it's got nothing to do with nuts. The, the nut gate isn't about nuts. Um, the, the best information we actually have, which doesn't seem to make any difference to a lot of people, is that um, the autopsy reports, and I've brought this up before, uh, refers very specifically to um, medical history. This is a quote from the autopsy reports, that CC had a medical history significant for peanut allergy. So that is something that is specifically mentioned and yet people are dismissive of it. They, oh, oh, no, no, uh, uh, that doesn't really matter. Um, I think it does matter. And in that respect, I think it's also interesting that um, that there is a photo of a jar of peanut butter in the Watts home. And you can also see through kind of extrapolation that peanut butter was often bought in like a trolley and, and it was placed in that pantry on the bottom floor. And in fact, there's a picture of CC sitting right next to it. And so by that, by that measure, you should have nutgate under the same scenario. You should have, um, well, you, you almost subjected your daughter to that. And this is why I say it's, it's got nothing to do with nuts. Um, it's got something to do with something else. And that's what we're going to be dealing with in this episode. So before we begin, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, please do. You can click on the icon on the bottom right of the screen, uh, or you can uh, subscribe just by clicking the sub subscribe button. Like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. So I've said Nutgate wasn't about nuts. Well, then what was it about? Now, you can get a really good idea of the answer to that question uh, from the phone data review, um, I've obviously covered that in, in 50 episodes, going chron chronologically through that, and you can go to the playlist to review that. I mean, that is your best source uh, on that. Um, I'm not going to go through it in a lot of detail, but except to say that, so if it wasn't about nuts, what was it about? 
it was really about the fact that Cindy said to Shanann, so I think they just kind of had a disagreement, like, wow, you know, my, my daughter almost ate this ice cream. And, and then I think somewhere along the line, Cindy said she needs to learn that she can't always get what she wants. Now, bear in mind, this is in a situation where she'd gotten out of bed. Everyone had, I guess, finished eating. She'd gotten out of bed, according to my understanding of it, uh, went sort of sneaked to the, the fridge to, to get the ice cream and in effect put her own life in danger, right? Um, and Cindy's response was to say, well, well, she's got to learn that she can't always get what she wants. And this seemed to really set Shanann off. And I can understand why. Because Shanann's whole identity, her whole persona on Facebook, the whole Thrive thing was about whatever you say you want, you can have. You know, whatever life you want, just to sort of uh, speak, utter it out into the universe and, and you can have whatever it is you want. So someone saying to you, you can't, you've got to learn that you can't have whatever you want. And not only um, is it uh, what, uh, her husband's mother telling her this, in other words, shattering that sort of fairy tale, undermining that fairy tale, invalidating that fairy tale, which effectively is doing all those things to Shanann herself because she's so invested in it. But her own child, it's like she's trying to bring up her children that you can have whatever you want, right? Uh, that is why their, their rooms are uh, color-coded and, and got their names on them. And um, it's sort of setting up a fairy tale life for them that they can have whatever they want. And maybe Shanann is trying to give them that because maybe she didn't have that. Maybe she didn't quite have um, that kind of thing. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe she did. Maybe she didn't. But it would make sense that she'd feel so strongly about this, perhaps if she's trying to make up for what she didn't have sort of in their lives. Now, um, I can't sort of overemphasize it enough to, um, Shanann would sort of have her, her children like like Bella make a vision board and the whole idea is that you know just if you see it you can have it and on paper there's nothing wrong with that on paper you, you do want to encourage your children to to have dreams to um, how can I put it to um, think about the future, to, to, to plan their lives, to have things to look forward to, right? Nothing wrong with that. I think that is completely different to almost um, attaching your children to the MLM train. In other words, you say, um, do you want a Lamborghini? Do you want to um, live in this big house? Uh, well, you can you can, you know, anything you want, you can have. Um, I think there's a bit of a missing link there. And the missing link is, well, you need to work hard. You need to be also honest. You need to um, perhaps study, uh, you know, educate yourself. You need to develop good relationships with people. You need to work well with money. You need, and all these things. It's not just oh, I want something, well, okay, great, you can have it. And I think that is a very destructive fairy tale to sell because what happens when you want something and you don't get it? What happens you, when you want something and you can't have it? Or worse, what happens when you want something, you get it, and then you lose it? How do you deal with that? And so where's it, how does the magical thinking work where... You want something, you get it, and then you lose it. Well, well, I just want it back. No, no, you can't have it back. And I think a primary way that, that we can think about it is what about like in relationships where you love someone very much and you want them and you want to keep them, but they don't want you. They've decided, I don't like you. I don't love you. I, I don't want to be part of your life anymore. And no matter what you think or wish or hope or dream, they are leaving. What are you going to do about that? And so 
one needs to now do one needs res resilience one needs to be able to cope with disappointment and defeat and disillusionment and um, your expectations not being met and not having too high expectations and it seems to me when you have this idea of okay you can have whatever you want and then you uh, that doesn't meet your expectations the problem is creating these very kind of um, unrealistic expectations and I think that is a route to, to misery and unhappiness I'm not saying you shouldn't um, want a, a better life for yourself but to expect a better life uh, I think is going to leave you disappointed um, because you, you, you have a, a stake in that you need to work at it you need to you know invest yourself as well um, so just a final point to make about this nut gate wasn't about nuts and you know see Cindy saying uh, you can't always get what you want um, I think a lot of people will really dislike me for saying this I think a lot of people will really dis hate hate me perhaps even for saying this but um, think about what Cindy said you can't always get what you want and then th what actually happened after that so this happened nutcat happened on July 9th what happened after that well Chris Watts was having an affair and he no longer wanted his child and that led to a situation of he doesn't want to be married to Shanann anymore and he doesn't want the child and what Shanann wanted was well I want the child I kind of have to have the child because I'm pregnant you know I might as well go through with it I also want to stay married kind of because I've got to I've got to because I need another income because I can't afford this and so um, you know if you if you took th that saying away from Cindy and, and just had it come out of the clouds you know almost like God speaking to you but Shanann you can't always get what you want um, your you, you you can't have your marriage anymore um, all I'm saying is what Cindy was saying in a way was true but it wasn't just true for Shanann that if Shanann wanted to be married and wanted the child uh, you can't always get what you want um, Chris Watts who wanted to have this affair well you can't always get what you want you can't you can't just have an affair like that first get divorced or whatever um, Chris Watts when he won, when when Kessinger gave him the key supposedly on the 8th of August okay well now it's on now it's a serious relationship between us but you but you're still married yeah well you can't always get what you want you first need to sort that out but what if I just commit murder then I can get just what I want no um, in terms of Nicole Kessinger she sees Chris Watts and she May perhaps envies his family situation the, the whole home life picture perfect thing that he's got and she's in love with that that portrait n not actually reality and um, Nicole you can't always get what you want and because all three of these people insisted it seems that led to this tragedy it, it's all three people insisting no I do want what I want and I think it also speaks to the world that we live in. Do you resent it when somebody says, no, well, you can't get what you want. You can't have that. Do you resent it? Do you resent someone telling you you can't have it? No, 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 I can. I can have whatever I want. Do you also want the consequences to that? So I do think it's a valuable lesson to say you can't always get what you want. And I can tell you just a little uh, anecdote from my life. Um, I've been hoping to purchase a Watt bike. It's W-A-T-T -T, and then it's a bike, it's a stationary bike just because, uh, you know, I haven't been going to gym all year. I have bought a treadmill, but I want to buy a Watt bike and it's supposed to be really, really good and I've been waiting all year to get it and it's been sold out for months on, uh, on end months and months 
and I've really been, as time has been going by, I've been wanting this this um, machine more and more and more. And I finally got an email from the supplier, and the price has now gone up about double. And it's just absurd. It's absurd how expensive it is. Um, let me just try and think how much it is in dollars. I think it costs about eight thousand dollars this this watt bike, and uh, I just phoned a friend of mine to ask him about it, and he just says that is ridiculous. And so I looks like I'm going to have to make an alternative arrangement. As much as I really wanted this this thing, because you can't always. It's not that I can't get it. It's just not reasonable, if I can put it that way. It's just not um, just unreasonably priced as far as we are concerned anyway if we go on to the next uh, slide Shanann wanted to make amends afterwards um, I think that really says it all I think we can sit here two years later and um, you know people can get angry with me and say who are you to judge Shanann I'm not doing that I'm simply trying to um, provide all the information in other words, just tell the story of, of what happened. Um, because it's quite difficult to do that. Um, everyone is putting their spin on it. Um, people project their own mother-in-laws into the situation or their own allergies into the situation. And no one is letting these people speak for themselves. It's also very difficult to, to, to know or to be able to rely on people very close to it for what really happened. You know, it's, and and we we would have been able to get some closure on it if it went to trial. If it went to trial, someone would have asked someone questions, and then they would have been cross-examined, and you would eventually be able to get a fairly good idea from lots of different people about what likely happened. But I, I think the the best um, um, the best version of events on this is basically from Shanann. Um, she, she castigates herself in the last days saying, well, you know, I've got, in fact, on the 12th of August, well, I've got an Italian temper and it sometimes gets the better of me. And to her credit, she writes a letter to Chris Watts on the 9th of August, where she says, you know what, I'm going to try and be more civil to your mother. She must also, whatever, you know, she must also do this and that. But I will try and um, be civil towards her. And in other words, Shanann is prepared to apologize for what she did. And Shanann is prepared to um, kind of make amends. And that to me, uh, I think all credit to her is she realized she made a mistake. She realized... Um, doesn't that doesn't it look like that if you you say I'm gonna be civil is doesn't that sound like someone who where she was previously really angry and and all that and now she wants to um, be civil to her mother-in-law doesn't it sound like she's kind of had a change of heart she's decided well it's important to my husband that that I don't kind of um, cut out his his family in our family right and i've already spoken about how the social death of this of, of nutgate nutgate was very damaging at a very critical time but how the, the social death actually preceded the actual death the fact that shanann was so uh, vocal to them uh, but to, to people around them that okay, I never want to see them again kind of gave him not permission but a kind of a license where he thought well if Shanann does disappear she, she'd threaten to do that anyway she, you know, she'd threaten to take herself and the children out of the equation and so he used that he used this incident to his own advantage um, and cynically kind of against Shanann and that brings us to what's used Nutgate to gaslight Shanann. And th this I find um, really tragic. Um, if you um, can 
move away from the drama and, and I realize it's difficult. I realize you want to be on someone's side and you want to take a certain position and, and whatever. But if you move into kind of a neutral perspective and let's say you're sitting on a mountain in Switzerland and you, you can see all the way into Colorado from this mountain in Switzerland, this neutral territory. And you say, well, what was actually the impact of Nutgate at the end of the day? And meaning in terms of the criminal psychology. And so what is unfortunate is, um, let me put it this way. If you take, if you had to take Nutgate completely away, in other words, there was no incident. There was no argument about ice cream. Shanann went to, and this is something also to bear in mind. Shanann went to her grand, her parents-in-law. Um, the whole idea was that, that she was letting her children stay with either her parents or her husband's parents so that she could work for six weeks. That's quite a big ask in a way. There's nothing wrong with you know, grandparents stepping in and helping out, but to do it for that length of time is is quite hectic. And this conflagration happened really early on during that, that period, basically in the second week. But be that as it may, um, what used Nutgate to gaslight Shanann to the extent that when, when she noticed that he was, was acting a bit standoffish, when she noticed that he wasn't communicating much with her, when she noticed that he wasn't very warm to her, um, that he wasn't calling her as often or whatever, this is while they were still in different states, she thought, well, I wonder if it's because of what I did to his parents. When they were together in North Carolina, um, and this is just after he tried to bring about a miscarriage. She was still wondering, is he not touching me? Is he not kissing me? Is he not sleeping in the same bed with me? Is he not nice to me? Is he not the nice loving Chris because of Nutgate? And Chris Watts let her believe that. Um, and the fact is, Nutgate wasn't irrelevant to Chris Watts' unhappiness. And I think that's another point to bring up is um, Nutgate was a symptom of what had gone on long before in their marriage. Nutgate was almost if if um, if wedding gate was what started off their marriage where Chris Watts' parents didn't feel comfortable to to be at the wedding. And you can say that's their own fault, but it also had to do with a disagreement with Shanann, with drama that came up. Well, Nutgate was at the end. So if there was drama at the beginning, there was drama at the end. And Shanann herself, as we heard in the beginning, was saying, I want a drama-free life. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's something that is very sad because I, I, I genuinely feel that, that if the, the drama of Nutgate wasn't there, Shanann probably could have saved her life, meaning she could have seen what was really going on because Shanann thought um, Chris Watts' unhappiness was due to Nutgate and she sort of suspected it could be an affair, right? She quite a few times said, you know, maybe he's not sleeping with me. He, after five weeks, he doesn't seem to want to have sex with me. What's going on? Um, is it because of Nutgate? Is he unhappy about that, right? And he was a little bit unhappy about that, but the real reason was he was sleeping with Kessinger. He was in love with Kessinger. He wanted to make a life with Kessinger. But if you took Nutgate completely out of the equation, and now Shanann's noticing, wow, you know, I didn't do anything wrong, or I didn't do anything that he's not happy with, or I didn't do anything to upset his parents, or whatever, um, Nutgate's simply not part of the equation. Why is Chris acting this way? Well, it would be quite obvious then. He's having an affair. And if Shanann knew he was having an affair, I think there, there would have been two responses. There would have either been kind of just, okay, this marriage definitely is over. Um, 
you know, like almost like throwing her hands up in the air. I'm not saying there wouldn't have been drama, but just that that would have been the absolute death knell to their relationship, especially since she was pregnant as well. So what I'm trying to say is if she knew that he was cheating on her, she wouldn't have fought for their marriage. The fact that she thought he was upset because of Nutgate meant that she thought there was still a chance. And what's also possible is she may have suspected he was cheating on her, but until he told her that, it also meant maybe he still wants to be in the marriage, which wasn't the case. So that's another alternative. I don't know what you guys think of that. I'm just saying it's really sad that because of Nutgate, Shanann struggled to see what was behind Nutgate or what was the real thing that was going on. And, um, you know, if the, if you take that drama away, it would have been very obvious to her. Another question to ask is, what drama would there have been if Chris Watts admitted the affair? Like, what would have happened? And I think there would have been Kessinger Gate. There would have been, if there was no Nutgate and Watts, felt, well, Shanann and I are kind of getting along, even though I've moved on. She's kind of been nice to me and nice to my family. I'm going to tell her what happened. Wouldn't there have been Kessinger Gate? Wouldn't there have been some big social media explosion? And perhaps he could have lost his job. Perhaps Kessinger could have lost her job anyway, you know, if that happened. Um, and I think that is the bottom line, is that Nutgate shows us um, the dynamic that is that was really going on. So, you know, a lot of people get, as I say, caught up in, was it this nut or that nut? Was there really an allergy? Is it um, Munchausen by proxy? Is it this or is it that? All of that, to me, strays from the central thing, which is Nutgate showed the true Watts family dynamic being um, arguing, drama, uh, grudges, um, you know, ultimately then apologizing, but, but several cycles of that. So if you think of way back to their wedding, you had the same thing. Um, uh, you know, let's do this. Uh, someone's not happy, arguing, drama, grudges. And then they got over it. The, you know, they despite the, 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 the rocky start to their, their marriage, they, you know, kind of became sort of uneasy friends. And then I think there would be another argument and another one and another one. And six, six years down the line, Nutgate, which is a big damaging argument that happened at a critical time. And what did this teach Chris Watts? I think it taught him... Um, you don't want to be in an argument with Shanann. That is, I think, the message that he got. You, If possible, you really want to avoid being in an argument with Shanann. Um, and you might think, well, no, that's not what he learned. But if you, if you bear in mind that Chris Watts is an introvert, he's not a good arguer, he's not a good talker, he's not someone who wants confrontation, well, so if you want to give him um, an excellent reason to avoid confrontation at the very end. So he's in a situation that is forcing him into a confrontation. I mean, that's what divorce is. What is divorce except a confrontation where you say, okay, it's over between us. Now let's argue about splitting everything up. Let's argue about where we're going to live and what's going to happen with the children. Divorce is like a confrontation fest right and he didn't want that and nutgate basically showed him do you want this times like a thousand and he didn't i'm not saying he was right to do what he did i'm saying he was afraid and and possibly that's why he did what he did so another way of just explaining Nutgate and how it exposed the true Watts family dynamic is so Nutgate itself shows what the dynamic was it, it, it's a brilliant in terms of this case understanding this case it's a brilliant piece of the the family dynamic where you see how how does Chris Watts and Shanann how do they argue with one another 
Shanann sends him messages. How does he respond? Uh, how do they argue? How do they fight? What does it look like? And you can see that in particular on August 4th of the phone data review. That, that's a really good example. And I think the day after as well, to some extent, the day after that as well, August 4th, 5th and 6th. And so you get a really good idea how they argue. And you'll also get a sense of do they do they do they talk to their own families that much about their own grief? Does the Shanann confide in her parents about what's going on? Does he confide? And, and answers kind of no. And it, you kind of get a sense that um, although they are both both children, so Shanann and Chris Watts are respectively loved by their parents, although that's there, th they're not necessarily that close to their families in a sense. Does that make sense? I mean, not close enough where uh, I think, I, I don't know if Shanann's parents knew um, about the unhappiness going on at the time, like uh, Shanann said that she was acting as if everything w that was going on was because of the pregnancy. That's what she said. Um, Chris Watts, um, we know he even lied to his father during the first confession. So um, although they, they're close, I, I, don't, I don't think it's um, all that close. If I can put it that way. And then the final thing that I want to highlight, and again, I think people won't like to hear this because it's not necessarily very positive, but Nutgate also exposed the thriving hypo uh, hypocrisy. Um, in other words, while Nutgate was going on, so from like the 9th of July, while Nutgate was going on, but then also while the divorce thing was starting to reach center stage. So, you know, Nutgate happened and there was unhappiness around that, but then it graduated. And what said to Shanann, you know, I'm not happy about this third child. I don't think we're compatible anymore. Um, I think we need to separate. And, and all this kind of thing. And despite all of that, despite Shanann feeling like this was the worst summer ever, that, uh, you know, I've cried myself to sleep for the past week, that my eyes hurt, my face hurts from crying so much, uh, I haven't gotten any sleep, etc., etc., etc. Shanann was still going on Facebook saying how um, happy she was, how wonderful Thrive was, and all that kind of thing. And I've got to admit, I was very surprised when the photos appeared of Shanann in Scottsdale, Arizona at that final Thrive event. Now, that's another thing just to mention is in the middle of all of this uh, drama, Shanann heads off to uh, Scottsdale, Arizona regardless. And... It's not her fault, you know, Chris Watts manipulated her, but all I'm saying is she's thriving in the middle of this critical cr critical thing where, you know, her husband is cheating on her actively. Um, he doesn't want a child. He doesn't want to be married. And in the middle of this basically argument, Shanann leaves to go on another Thrive thing. And it's possible that while she's away, he kills her children. Um, or one of the children it's possible but ultimately they weren't thriving their, their finances weren't thriving their marriage wasn't thriving and um, you know it would soon turn into the, the Thrive fairy tale was about to become an absolute nightmare a, a, an annihilation but the fact is you can go and look at Shanann's Facebook posts including on the August the 9th, where she talks about just how happy and functional she is. But that isn't what was going on. How on earth was she going to talk about moving out of that big house they were in, downsizing on Thrive? 
that would have been interesting to see. And so I think the the way that Nutgate exposed the thriving hypocrisy, I think it exposes a lot of other hypocrisies. In this case, the Chris Watts' hypocrisy, him lying about what happened not just once to law enforcement, but over and over again. Um, think about just the thriving hip hypocrisy of a child, you know, I'm pregnant with this child, I'm so happy to be pregnant, Let, let's do a gender reveal. But meanwhile, behind the scenes, there's so much unhappiness. There's so much, there's my husband who doesn't want this child. We're not happily married, but, but we're going to tell everyone we're thriving. And I don't think that, I mean, you might think that this is pointing a finger to the Watts family and blaming people. It's not that at all. It's simply saying this was happening, wasn't it? And as, as soon as you can agree that it was happening, then we can look beyond that and say, isn't this also happening in the world? Don't we also have political leaders who, who sell us a thriving story? Because that's what we want to hear. They, they, they're telling us what we want to hear. And, and that comes at what kind of cost? And you may not believe in climate change because you don't want to hear that, that things aren't, aren't good. So you'd rather someone tells you what you want to hear. In same with the pandemic. Um, no, everyone's thriving. Um, no one's gotten sick. Um, no, this, this, is, this whole thing's a hoax. We are all actually thriving. Everything's fine. Um, I, I went to someone, someone's home yesterday and um, this this guy, I don't know him that well, but he just told me that he got sick in February and at that time the coronavirus test wasn't yet available in my country. But he firmly believes that he did have coronavirus and he got so sick that, that it's changed his life to some extent that he well, he's, he's no longer doing the Ironman because he got so sick. He was training for the Ironman and just think about that. Iron Man, you know, being the strongest you can be, thriving, and then you get sick, so sick that you that you eventually say, well, look, as much as I wanted to do that, I'm throwing the towel in it. I can't do that anymore. I can't. I can't always get what I want. And that thriving hypocrisy, you know, think about what Cindy said. You can't always get what you want, and the thriving hypocrisy of no, you can. You can always get what you want. And ultimately, what happened in the Watts family? Who got what they want? Did Shanann got, get what she wanted? Did the children who, who wanted whatever food they wanted, did they get what they want? They are all in a cemetery, including Nico. Did Chris Watts get what he wanted? He's in um, prison, I think, 23 hours a day. Did he get what he wanted? Did Nicole Kissinger get what she wanted? There's talk that she's now in Alaska. I don't know if it's true. Until we hear from her, we're not going to know what is going on. But did, did any of these people get what they wanted? Or is the Watts family tragedy an example that you can't always get what you want and the danger of selling this fairy tale day in and out that you can get what you want? And... I've got an idea, Chris Watts committed the crime because people would have had a difficult time accepting him if he'd been honest. So in other words, if he'd said, okay, I'm cheating on my wife, I love this person, um, I'm going to get divorced, society, is, is that okay with you? And what would society have said? No. No, it's, it's not okay. We, we're going to have to punish you for that. Um, you can't leave your wife and be with this woman. We don't, we don't accept that. We're not going to let you get away with it. And that is why I feel like he needed to cheat the system because of society. Society has been caught up in this thriving hypocrisy. Whereas if we can acknowledge our mistakes and say, you know what? I got my wife pregnant. 
um, I meant well, but I, I changed my mind. It's not an ideal situation. I'll look after this child, but, but I love this person. I want to be with that person. And what if we lived in a society that said, you know what? What you did isn't great, um, but we all make mistakes. In other words, we all make mistakes, and that's to some extent human, and we can accept that. I don't mean you commit triple murder, oh, we all make mistakes. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, okay, I got my wife pregnant, but then I met somebody. Okay, we, we as a society aren't going to st string you up for that. Um, it's not very good, but, um, you know, we, we, we are also not going to condemn you for the rest of your life. Uh, some people make mistakes. And we don't live in a society like that. We live in a society of hypocrites where we're not allowed to make mistakes, but, but people are making mistakes all the time. And we we taught to hide our mistakes in order to tell this fairy tale that we want to tell either about ourselves or whatever. And so I do think one of the morals of this story is you can't always get what you want. And social media is is toxic in the sense that it is spreading the lie that um, people are living fairy tales, perfect fairy tales all over the place. All these perfect pictures are perfectly true. Well, are they? So that's my story. I'm not going to take it further than that. In the uh, next episode, I'm going to put up, I'm going to talk about why Nutcade happened. Um, but beyond the, I'm not going to talk about the family dynamics. I'm not going to talk about, I'm going to talk about something else that is, I think, going to be quite surprising for a lot of people. Something that was happening in North Carolina at the time. So that'll be only on Patreon on the $2 tier. So if you're interested in catching that episode, um, it's quite shocking if it's true. I don't know if it is true, but because I'm speculating, but... Um, it looks like it, it could have had a big impact on what Shanann was thinking at the time. So if you're interested in that, go and check it out. Otherwise, uh, thank you for listening. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Like, share, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time.